So here in the final problem of the semester, you're supposed to be making another subclass of this chart class. The chart class is the one that collects the values. So we can look at this thing here. So we're collecting these points. And when a new point comes in, we add it to this chart. You'll notice that I defined this thing as final. That means that you can't override it. You can't supply a different implementation in the subclass. And I, this is actually commonly done in real life, but I've done it here so that you can't come up with like adventurous new ways of solving this problem. Um, the compiler would not just allow you to add a different implementation of this. Um, in this case here, my get data methods um, takes the array list here, the one that we have up here, and the one to which points are being added every time that you add a point, and it turns it into an unmodifiable list. So I've just done that to force you into the right way where you need to override the get data method to sort that uh, array. And I don't, didn't want you to sort something in the superclass because it's considered somewhat unnatural to mutate something to which you just have a reference. So I wanted you to, to make a new array that has these things sorted. So back to the, to the problem a little bit. So when you have some collection of points that come in in random order, and now if you want to draw a line chart through them, the order in which they come in, um, I think I had this one first, and then this one second, and this one third, and so that's completely immaterial. So you just care about how they're ordered in the plane, and you want to draw the line like that. So that means that you want to, to, to sort the points uh, as they come in. And how do you sort stuff? Well, the easy way to sort something is if it implements comparable. And that's what you were asked to do in the point class here. So point implements the comparable interface that you've seen in the previous lecture. Um, that means it needs to implement the comparative method. Um, notice that there's this generic issue. Comparable is a generic interface. So point wants to be compared with other points. And the point of that, no pun intended, is so that you can say point other here without having to like fuss with general objects. So how do you compare two points? Um, so if you have a point here and a point there, this is x, y, and this is x2, y2. And if x is less than, y, uh, than x2, then the first point comes first. If on the other hand it happened to be coming the other way around, then uh, x2 would come first. So uh, what if the x coordinates are, are exactly identical? That would happen if you have these two points vertically. And so what we're saying is that whatever y coordinate is greater uh, would come last. So in this case, we would say this one comes, the, the top one comes before the second one. And otherwise, they're completely identical. So that's what's expressed in the code here. This is what's called the lexicographic comparison. And it's kind of similar to the comparison of strings, where you first check is the first character the same, and if, if they differ, then you know, whichever one comes first, comes first. If they are the same, then you move on to the second character and so on. With points, you only have a first and a second position. And if those are both the same, then the points must be equal. With, with, with strings, you would actually keep on going. All right, so that's the, that's the comparison part. Um, now, what do we, uh, what's the use of that? So let's have a look at the line chart class here. So... Um, let me actually draw a different picture on this here. So the complexity of this here is you have this line chart object. So here is my object, Fred, which is a line chart. And Fred has a problem. So Fred is being called with these, these methods, calls, where it adds points. Now, there's nothing poor Fred can do about add. Uh, it was add point. It was just add, right? Let's let's have a look here at the superclass. It was just add. So points are being added to Fred, and there Fred has no choice because add was final. So those points are going to be added to what? They're going to be added to whatever the superclass does with it, namely to this data here. 
So there's an instance variable data here. That's this array. And it's in the superclass part. So Fred has kind of limited access to it. That's how subclasses work. Subclasses cannot access the private parts of the superclass. Fine. But uh, get data fortunately was not final. And so in get data, uh, Fred can do things, meaning the line chart in general can do things. So you want to sort them. So what you want to do is you want to get the superclasses idea of what the points are, which are unsorted. You then want to sort them. Um, now, this is where this unmodifiable collection thing comes in. We can't simply call collections.sort on data because data is not modifiable. Um, if you tried this, you would have gotten some exception. So we need to make a copy of it. Here's how you make a copy of an array list. We sort it. And then you could just actually now uh, return sorted data if you so chose, or you can again turn it into an unmodifiable list, which is what I have done in terms of general elegance. Um, I, uh, my expectation was not that you would do that. I figured you would just return sorted data. Now I've done another thing in terms of elegance, and that is I figured, gosh, every time you call get data, which, you know, which might occur a lot of times, do you really have to sort it every time? Sorting is not free. It's not cheap, actually, as you learn in 46p. So I figure, why not make it so that you only sort it if it's necessary? Now, what could mutate uh, the data? The only way that the data could be mutated is if someone previously had called add. Now, there's nothing we can do about add. Remember, it's final. But we know kind of the side effect of add is that the collection gets bigger. So here what I'm doing is I'm asking, what is the underlying collection? Remember, I have to call super.getData because the super class will then return to me what the actual data is. And then I say the previously sorted data, if it's if the size is smaller, um, then I better resort again. Um, if the size was exactly the same, that means that someone called get get data twice without an intervening call to add. And in that case, I don't really have to do anything special. I don't have to pay for the sorting. I didn't expect you to really do this. But I thought you might find it instructive to think about it. All right, so this is how it works. Let's see what it looks like. So when I run the chart demo, here actually nothing special happened because the original chart demo, when we look at the code, fed in a bunch of points that were all in increasing order. So all you get was this kind of zigzaggy graph of you know, some values that were the sign of something. And like I said, you know, this is the sign of something in, in, in radians, and we're feeding in some reasonably random values. You just kind of expect it to more or less zigzag along. Um, the second one here was more interesting because here we had these points that formed a circle, but they form a circle in a pretty random way. They kind of jump around, but then when I plot them by using the line chart, um, the jumping around points get sorted by the x value. So you see the curve jumping up and down in the envelope of the circle. So what's the grand scheme of this other than the pretty pictures? Um, what, what I was trying to get at this here is to give you something where you had to extend a class by this other class. And you were somewhat constrained by the fact that you weren't allowed to, to, to mess with add because that was final where you had to call super uh, in a subclass method to get the underlying data, and then you had to change its representation. So here, line chart, when it publishes this data, says, I, the line chart, I'm just like a chart, except when you get my list of data, it's sorted. And then the drawing method itself, it calls get data on itself, so it gets the sorted data. It's pretty straightforward. It simply says, I'm going to join two points, the current one and the next one. Here, uh, as always, you know that I prefer the generic for loop, uh, the enhanced for loop over the one with the indexes. But so I have the problem that uh, with an index for loop, you can easily say join the ith and the i plus first with an enhanced for loop, you don't have that. So I'm doing this trick. I say the previous one, I'm, I'm setting it to null at the outset because the very first time that I, that I enter the loop, I don't have two points. but uh, eventually I'll have two points by storing previous to P and then I connect the previous and the next one. 
so that's that and it's it's a good example on how you can uh, define a behavior in the subclass that enhances the behavior of the superclass. It enhances it in two ways. Number one, we get to draw oh, some a set of lines, a reasonably pretty set of lines as it happens. And number two, we get to produce a different view of what it means to get the data. Namely, we want to get the original data, but we want to sort them.